A while back, I showed a person a preview of this painting, and I was asked, is that your son? I said, kind of, because in a way, my paintings are my children. One thing I like to do is instead of actually going straight to the face, is actually go for the background first. One reason is I already have a composition established, so I might as well get the background to make the shapes of the actual figure first. Plus I want to treat this more like a landscape and not as an actual like portrait. Because in the end I want it to look like a three dimensional painting, not a photo. So I painted it like a sculptor trying to get the shapes to stand out. One of the things I requested when I asked for more photos is for the hands to be visible. Because I kind of wanted to do hands, especially hands that were sticking out. So I got what I wished for. And these hands, they're not adult hands, they're baby hands. So they're on the chubby side. So as I painted them, I kept that in mind. What is a simple line or a shape later will actually end up being the side of the face, a shadow, or a crease in the hand of the baby. Everything in the end will fall in place. The beginning stages of this painting, it's more about applying the lines and shapes of colors. Kind of like I would like to say, build a road map for the rest of the painting. So if you get like certain things in the right area, later you detail them more, instead of doing the major details right away. I didn't actually do a grid for the face, even though I did one for the whole painting. But I did make sure when I aligned the lips and noses, they made sense based on the structure of the face. Also, I don't know if you know this, but no one's face is actually perfect or symmetrical. And sometimes, it's the imperfections that make the likeness of a face. The biggest challenge of this entire painting was painting the nose. The way the light hits it directly from underneath almost gave the baby kind of like a pig-like appearance. And I kept despising it. If anything, it's one of the things in the painting I kept going back into, trying to get it right. But one thing to know, whenever painting a face, the nose is the thing that sticks out the most. So keep that in mind when you do three-dimensional work. The nose extends past the face. Don't be afraid to use a palette knife once in a while to apply lots of paint. As you can see, I did that for the background. Even if it's simple, big, giant shapes, paint them to get them out of the way. Lay the foundations and then come back later to detail them. But always when you lay foundations, try to establish the form and volume. One thing to know about doing portraits, and if you're gonna include the hands, they are as important as doing the face. Paint or draw them very carefully. If you want a good laugh, check out a scene in Goya's Ghost. There's a scene where he's doing a portrait of a priest and he asks them, do you want your hands included? Going back to the underpainting, something I pay attention is definitely tones, warm and cool. It's very important that you lay the proper orange or the proper blue, because when you go back into it later, it will come through. It's all about the layers to get vibrant looking colors. It might not make sense right now, but I am adding almost pure white into certain areas to establish the highlights. This is areas of the hand that the sunlight will hit directly. Keep in mind that hands and fingers have volume. Think of the fingers as cylinders. Even though his hand is in a fist, the fingers have their own form as well. They have knuckles, they have little folds and creases. With all honesty, the photo doesn't show much of it, so I have to be very inventive with the color usage by using cools and warms in order to create the sense of three-dimensionality. When painting features of the face, whether it's the lips or nose or the cheeks, think of the light and how it carves out the features and paint accordingly like a sculptor. Same thing goes for the hands as well. Here I used blues and peachy tones to carve out the fingers out of the hand. 
Uh, here's the ear. This is one of the areas I probably didn't spend too much time because it's well hidden. But I made sure when painting it, it receded into the picture plane. When you lay colors of the face, think of a landscape and how the sun will carve out the forms of the terrain. Same thing with a face, but to a much smaller scale and a more delicate touch. Something I paid a lot of attention to is the different colors that I spotted in the photo. I did exaggerate them to be honest. The blues and the purples, I tried to emphasize them as much as possible so they stood out. I usually use two blues in a painting, but in this scenario, I only use one mainly, which is cobalt blue. I did use cerulean blue, but very lightly. And for the warm tones, I focused on the cadmiums, yellow, yellow pale, orange, red, and also alizarin crimson. Contrary to belief, some shadows are actually worn. For example, the chin of this baby and the side of his cheeks. The lips involve a lot of work. And one thing to consider when painting them, the light, because one is going to be a little darker than the other, but not in all scenarios. It's all about the lighting again. And the light carves out the features and the textures. Paying attention to edges is very important when it comes to lips. Sometimes there's just a very sliver of light or dark and you have to capture that. The eyes are the windows to a person's soul. But what I paid attention when painting them is the lighting again. How the light hits underneath the eyelids and then how it's darker on the bottom. And also the white of the eye is not white, it's actually a little bit blue. And that's because it's in the shade. And then of course, the little baby's eyelashes. Keep in mind that the eyes are spheres and they're not flat. And also, pupils are not of a solid color. The black dots in the middle are actually just a void. The irises open and close, creating that void. And there are variations of color because of that. Though I usually work a painting as a whole, when it comes to portraits, you gotta make sure the face looks good before moving on. And the moment I felt the face was right, it was time to work on the clothing. What I like a lot about this photo is the actual clothing the baby is wearing. I liked all the little figurines of balloons, birdies, and parachutes, and cloudies. Yeah, I said cloudies. Something about them interested me, so... I chose this photo for that reason. I'm glad they picked this outfit because it looks amazing and also the primary colors are great. Painting the details on the clothing was actually kind of easy but it was also easy to mess up when the paint was wet. So one thing I always kept in mind is I am going to go back into that. What you'll notice is some of the reds and blues and yellows have bled into the white but it didn't bother me knowing that I'm just laying out the shapes. Like I mentioned before, oil paint has its advantages and disadvantages when wet. In this scenario, the paint being dry would have benefited me. Later I plan on going back, obviously, to sharpen those edges and correct the areas where the paint bled. The important thing is I laid the foundation for the clothing. An important note is when creating a pattern on clothing, keep in mind you have to go along with the form of the body that the clothing is on. So pay attention to curves, folds, areas in the dark, and also areas in the light. That in the end is what will create a more believable pattern if your goal is for illusionism. If you made it to the end, thank you again for watching. Once again, my name is Charolobos, I go by Bob, I am not your typical painter. Stay tuned for part 2, the finishing touches. Also check out my Instagram, spoiler alert, I might have a picture of the final painting posted by the time you watch this. Thanks again.